Thank you for watching this DPL tutorial video. In this series of videos, I will explain the basics of fault tree modeling via a simple example using the DPL9 fault tree software. A fault tree is a structured model that uses a deductive top-down approach to analyze the risk or potential faults in a system. There is a single event at the top of the model that is referred to as the top event. This is the root of the model and represents the most general statement of risk. Generally, the top event is an undesirable failure with major consequences that one wants to prevent. The main purpose of a fault tree is to provide a graphical representation of the breakdown of the top failure event into smaller component faults. It also depicts all the interactions between these components via AND and OR gates, which behave like their logical operator counterparts. The motivation for modeling a risk with a fault tree is based on the observation that the probabilities of small component faults can be more easily assessed than the probability of more complex general faults. In this way, the analysts can get a better handle on the probability of a system failure, the weakest links within a system, and how components' faults interact to cause a breakdown. Armed with this information, the analyst has the means to quantitatively assess actions that may reduce risk. In a DPL fault tree, a binary event represents a particular risk or fault and appears as a green oval. A binary event is an uncertainty with two possible outcomes, occurrence, or true, and non-occurrence, faults. The next level down from the top event consists of a set of events that feed into a gate attached to the top event. These events are interpreted according to the gate. An OR gate means that any individual event occurrence implies occurrence of the top event. With an AND gate, the events are causes of the top event, all of which must happen in order for the top event to occur. Following this logic down the tree, at some point the events become specific and concrete enough that they can be assessed directly. This is where the tree should end, and these endpoints are referred to as the basic events of the model. Basic events are the binary events at the bottom of the fault tree. These events must have a specified probability of occurrence, defined by either an explicit number or an expression. All events throughout the tree are determined by some combination of basic events. You can think of basic events as the inputs of a fault tree. Binary events that are not basic events are called derived events and are therefore defined by the events and gates connected below it. Now that you understand fault tree basics, let's build one. The simple fault tree I'm going to model breaks down a private home power failure. We'll model the failure from the top, most general event down to the smallest, most specific events. I have a blank workspace open in DPL Fault Tree. The modeling window is on the right and the workspace window is on the left. Notice also that the Fault Tree ribbon tab is active. The first thing I'm going to do is access my model settings to increase the number of decimal places shown in results. Generally, the probability of the top event occurring is very small, so I'm going to increase the number of decimal places for outputs for this model from 1 to 6. The top event I'm breaking down is a home power failure. A home power failure will occur if there is no electric power coming from the grid and my backup gas generator fails. Notice I said AND, meaning both events need to occur for the top event to occur. Consequently, the first element I'll add to my fault tree is an AND gate. I'll place it near the top of the model window. I'll double click the AND gate to access the general tab of the fault tree node definition dialog, where I can provide a name for the gate. First listed is the long name field. DPL uses the long name to generate a variable name for the node for use in formulas and internal calculations. Results will use the long name as well. I'm going to enter power failure for the long name. Notice that DPL automatically derives a short name from the long name entered, in this case PF, which is acceptable. The characters provided for the short name will appear within the node in the model display, and is restricted to about six characters. A short name is required for the gate because it is the top event. Lastly, there is an annotation field. Text entered here appears in the fault tree model within a gray box above the node. Annotations are useful for making the tree easier to understand, but also create a much larger model display. Typically, the long name can be used for the annotation, so there is a button provided that I will use to copy the long name to the annotation field. I'll click OK to close the dialog. You can see that the short name is visible within a binary node connected above the gate with the annotation displayed above the node within a gray box. If you provide a short name for a gate, the short name will be displayed as a binary node connected directly above the gate. Notice also that when I select the name gate, the connection and binary node above it are selected as well. Note that I could have created a separate binary node for the top event and then connected an AND gate below it. Using a named AND gate instead allows you to accomplish the same thing in fewer clicks. 
Now we need to create and connect the two component failures mentioned previously, no power from grid and backup generator fails. Let's start with no power from grid. I won't have power coming to the house from the grid if there is a generation failure or a distribution failure or a private line failure. Notice the ORs. This means that any one of these events taken individually will cause there to be no power coming from the grid to my house. Consequently, I'll drop an OR gate beneath the AND gate named Power Failure. I will again edit the gate and will enter a long name of no power from grid. Instead of using the short name provided, I'll enter the word grid, and I'll copy the long name to the annotation field. After closing the dialog, I'll connect the OR gate to the AND gate named Power Failure via the Fault Tree Connection Add command. The cursor moves to the model window and changes to an Add Connection cursor. I'll click the predecessor node, No Power From Grid, and then the successor node, Power Failure, to make the connection. Now for the Backup Generator Fails event. My generator will fail if it's out of service or if it's out of fuel, so I need to add another OR gate. I'll place this one below the AND gate named Power Failure. I'll supply a long name of Backup Generator Fails, a short name of Backup, and will copy the long name to the annotation. I'll connect this new OR gate to the AND gate named Power Failure using the keyboard shortcut. I'll press the Shift key and we'll click the predecessor and then the successor. Notice that once the connection is established, DPL automatically arranges the nodes centered left to right beneath the top AND gate. This is because the auto arrange feature is turned on within the Fault Tree Display group. As you can see, annotations are helpful in providing model clarity, but can make the model display grow very large very quickly. Notice within the Fault Tree Display group that you can toggle the node annotation display on or off. Additionally, you can control the size of the annotation box using the Width and Lines edit boxes. For this model, I'm going to resize the annotation boxes to be 9 for width and 3 for lines. This is the conclusion of the first video. I would encourage you to watch the next video in the series where I will continue to build out the fault tree.